So moving up in the dockerization video series, in this video we're going to see how to dockerize a React project and set up and configure a development environment with also hot reloading inside the container. So stick with me to learn more. What's up guys, medium guy here. Before I jump to this video, please do go watch my videos on my channel. I've got cool videos about cool technologies. I've also got dockerization for other technologies. In this video series, I'll put the link down below. So in this specific video, we're going to see how to create a development environment in Docker for a React project and later using a Docker Compose file, we're going to see how to create a container out of this image that we'll build, which will hold our React project in it. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see over here, I have a React project, the very basic, simple React project, which has the package.json file over here and the src directory which holds the source code for this very basic project additionally in here i have a docker file plus a docker ignore file which i'm going to explain in just a moment so in the docker file we're using the node version 17 as the base image and as the working directory we'll use the slash app the first thing will actually copy the package.json and package-lock.json to the working directory and by running the npm install command we're actually going to install the dependencies that are declared inside the package.json file and we'll actually be able to run our react project so the next instruction will just simply copy everything in the current directory to the working directory inside the container and next by running the chown-r user node group node the node modules directory which will actually go ahead and own the node modules directory with the user and group node which is the predefined user inside the node image that we're using and next we're actually going to expose port 3000 because by running npm start it'll actually run by default on this very port so again the reason that i'm copying the package json file separate from all the source code is because every instruction that i'm writing in my docker file will actually result in a layer and docker will actually try to cache these layers if there are no changes in in the previous layers and it'll actually try to use the cache for the npm install in the next builds if ever i don't make any changes to the previous layers which is like for example if i don't change the package.json file so resulting in that the docker will actually go ahead and use the cache to bypass these instructions so with this very basic docker file actually i'm ready to create my docker image so if i switch to the terminal i'll hit ls i'll make sure i'm in the exact same directory that my docker file and source code exists so by hitting docker build dash t which will enable us to pass a image name and a tag name which if i don't pass the tag name it'll go ahead and use the latest as the default so in this case it is okay for me so actually by passing colon and a tag name like for example v10 we'll be able to define our tag name so latest will do for me for this case and as the last parameter i'll pass the dot as the building context which is exactly the same directory that i'm in right now so if i hit enter this will actually go ahead and create my image that holds my project and all its dependencies on it so it might take a little bit longer 
just don't lose your patience and wait for all the instructions to be completed so mine finished after a few minutes and with that my image is ready to be used and create containers from it so in order to create containers i'm going to actually use docker compose file so i'll say touch docker compose dot yaml or simply yml and by saying code docker compose file i'll be actually able to open it in the vs code so first thing i'll define its version 3.3 .3 for me next i'll declare the services section and as the first service i'll say awesome dash react the first thing i'll try to define its image to use so i'll say image and again i'll pass awesome react because it's the exact same name that i passed when creating the docker image next i'll say ports i'll map 3000 to 3000 inside the container so i'll be able to actually access it from my machine next i'll try to mount the project files inside the container so i'll say volumes dot slash to the slash app inside the container but just pay attention to the node modules inside the container which should have the packages installed in it and as you can see over here i don't actually have the node modules and i have actually a dot docker ignore file which holds the node modules the dot docker ignore file is something like dot git ignore file which is for docker so basically docker will ignore the files and directories that are passed inside this file so in order to avoid replacing the node modules directory i'll pass slash app slash node modules and i think with that i have the very basic setup to run my container so if i say docker compose up dash d hopefully i'll be able to create my container and actually access it from the browser so as we can see over here my container is up and running if i say docker compose ps i see my container name the command which is npm start which i defined in the docker file the state is up and the port 3000 mapped to the 3000 inside the container so by hitting docker compose logs i'll pass dash f to follow the logs and actually you can see over here that a node modules directory which is an empty directory is created in the project root directory so the app got compiled successfully if i go to the browser i'll say localhost 3000 and hopefully i'll be able to access the basic react app which is running as a docker container so lastly in order to test the hot reloading inside the container i'm just going to change the app.tsx file inside the src directory and by changing some text over here i'll say hello docker i'll save the file and as the logs is following i can see that the codes got compiled again without any issues and if i go to the browser i see that the text has been changed accordingly so this is basically because i have mounted the source files in my machine to the slash app inside the container if i make any changes in my host machines files it'll be mapped to inside the container and the changes will be applied inside the container and the server listening for the file changes will actually handle the hot reloading and as a result i'll be able to see the changes in the browser so with that that's all for this video i hope you learn something new in this one if you have any questions if you have any recommendations i'll be glad to see your comments in the comment section down below i'll put all the related links plus my github repository which will hold all the codes and configurations that i make in my videos 
so you'll be able to access them easily so just don't forget to watch the other videos in this video series i have dockerization for other technologies and more is still coming also don't forget to like and subscribe which will help grow the channel and with that i hope to see you in the next videos